Hey guys, it's Bonnie and today I'm going to be making a tutorial on how to use the execute command. This is another command that I would recommend learning if you like creating your own maps or mini games or add-ons or whatever you want to use this for. I use this a lot whenever I create a lot of the challenge add-ons that I've made. This command is really easy to use and first I'm going to show you how to use it and then I'll show you some examples of what you can create using this command. Uh, so first let me show you why this command is pretty useful. So what this command allows you to do is it allows you to execute any command from any entity or player that you choose. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. So just as an example, if I use the summon command, so if I did summon and then fireworks rocket, if I type it in here, I'm the one who's executing this command. So if I activate this command, it's going to summon the fireworks rocket from wherever I'm at because I'm the one who executed this command. And if I were to type in that same exact command, but inside of a command block, uh, the firework will be summoned from where the command block is because it's being executed from this command block. So using the execute command, you could change who you're executing the command from. So if I did execute, uh, it would give me a few different options here. It would I could choose add A, which would execute the command from it from all the players, or add E, which would be from all the entities, or add P from the closest player, add R from a random player, or add S from yourself. You could also just put the name. So just an example, if I did add E, this would be from all the entities, and then the position, which is just three tilts. And then you could choose whatever command you want to run. This could be any command in the game. And it will run it from all the entities. So if I did the same same command again, which is summon, and then fireworks rocket, since I put add E, this will run the summon command from all the entities in the game. So if I activate it now, it summoned in a firework from all the entities. And you could also be a bit more specific. So you could do execute add E, and then you could do bracket, and then type equals. And then you could choose whatever mob you want to run this command from. So you could do cow or sheep or village or whatever you want. So just an example, I'll put sheep here, and then close bracket. So now it will be executing the summon command from all the entities that are sheep. So if I activate it, it only summoned it from that sheep because it's only being executed from that sheep now. And another thing that you could do is here where it says type equals, if you put an exclamation mark right after the equal sign, this will tell the game to run the to execute the summon command from all the entities except the sheep. So having a so having an exclamation mark here will make it so so it executes the command from all the entities except that sheep. So if I run it now. It's summoning in the firework for, from all the entities except that sheep. Another really useful feature from the execute command is that it allows you to detect a specific block from any entity or player that you choose. And if it detects that specific block in the location that you choose, it will allow you to run another command. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I type in execute and then add A, which will be all players, and then the position of where the player is. And for this, I'll just put three tilt. So tilt, tilt, tilt. Uh, then you put detect and then you choose the position of where you want to detect the block. So if I do tilt and then tilt and then negative one and then another tilt, this will be detecting one block below the player. And then you choose well, whatever block you want to be detecting. And this could be any block in the game. So if I did cobblestone and then you put the data value. So for cobblestone it's just zero. And this could be any block in the game, like I said. So right now I'm having it detect a cobblestone block. Uh, one block below the player. If it detects that cobblestone, you can run any command that you want. So this could be any command in the game. So just as an example, I'll do a say command. So I'll have it say and then the message you wanted to say. So here I'll just type in hello. So if I run it now, it's going to fail to execute because I did not have a cobblestone below, below me. But if I stand right on top of the cobblestone and run the same command again, it's going to say it's going to say the message because the it ran the command because there was a cobblestone right below me. And like I said, this could be any command in the game. And I'll show you a few different things that you can create using using the detect command. So first, let me show you a few simple things that you can create using the execute command. So right here, I have it set up. So if I throw a snowball, it's going to summon lightning wherever that snowball is. So if I throw it, it summons in the lightning wherever that snowball is. I and everything you create is like a fireworks arrow. And these are just very basic examples. So this one just summons in a firework wherever it detects an arrow. And let me show you the commands for these. They're pretty simple. So all you have to do is place a repeating command block. And this is for the snowball. So it's just repeat, unconditional, and always active. And this is the command. And it's going to be execute, add E, type equals snowball, tilt, 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 and then summon, and then lightning bolt. So it's only executing the summon command from the snowballs. Yes. And let me show you the other one. So this one's pretty much the same. So this one's set to repeat, unconditional, and always active. 
And this is a very similar command, it's just execute at e type equals arrow. So all I did was change the arrow and then summon and then fireworks rocket. And you can change this to whatever you want. Just as an example, I'll change it here. So instead of uh, firework, it summons in TNT. So if I shoot the arrow now, it's going to summon TNT wherever that arrow is. Let me show you what I mean. And you can just change that command around however you want. This just That was just a simple example. Now let me show you another example of what you could create using this command. So another really common use for this command is that you can use it to give a, any mob a dialogue. So for example, if I get close to this pig, it says the name of the pig, it says, and then it says a message that I chose. And you can change this around however you want. It's same with the villager. If I get close to the villager, it says uh, the name of the villager, and then it says a message that I chose. And to create this, it's very simple. Let me show you how I did this. Uh, so what you want to do first is just set up a repeating command block. You set it to repeat, unconditional, and always active. And this is the command. So the first command is going to be execute at E, type equals pig, tilde, 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 and then test for at P, R equals 3. So what this command is doing is executing at all the entities that are pigs. And the command that it's running is a test for command. So what this command is doing is just testing for the closest player uh, that is within three blocks. But since it's being... Since this command is being executed from the pig, it's testing for whenever a player gets within three blocks of a pig. So if it does detect a player that is within three blocks of the pig, it's going to send a redstone signal and it's going to activate this command. So let me show you what I mean. So if I get within three blocks of the pig, it sends a redstone signal and then it activates this command, which is an impulse unconditional and needs redstone. And this is the command. This is going to be another execute command. So it's executing at E type equals pig. So it's executing at the pig again. So once this one gets activated, it's running a say command. So here you could just type in any message that you want. You could change this around however you want. And let me show you the one for the villager, but it's pretty much the exact same thing. So it's set to repeat, unconditional, and always active. And this is the first command. So it's just execute at E, uh, type equals villager. And it's also running a test for command. So it's testing for the closest player within three blocks. And if it detects the player within three blocks of that villager, it's going to activate this command. And this one said an impulse, unconditional, and needs redstone. And this one's another execute, add e, type equals villager. And it's going to run a say command. So it's just say, and then whatever message you want the villager to say. Another thing that you can create using the execute command and the detect command is that you can use it to make like a conveyor belt. So uh, whenever any entity or player steps on on these blocks, it will move them towards the direction that the block is that the arrow is pointing to. So just an example, if I drop an item here, it's gonna move the item to whatever direction the arrow is pointing. It also works for players. So if I step on this, so this will move me to wherever the arrows are pointing. And you can use this for a lot of different things. You can use it to make like conveyor belts or elevators or whatever you want. And let me show you the commands for these. So the first one's going to be a repeating command block. So it's going to be set to repeat, unconditional, and always active. And this is the command. So And I'll go over this really quick. So if you want to pause the video and copy the commands, or I'll have all the commands in the description. I also have a download link for the map, for this map, if you don't understand what I'm saying, if you just want to check out the commands. So this is the command. So it's execute, eddy, tilt, 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 detect, tilt, tilt, negative one, tilt, and then magenta glaze terracotta. And then the data value here I have it set to 2, tp at s, tilde, 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 and then 0 0.4. Uh, so what this is doing is executing at all the entities. Then it's running a detect command, and it's and then the position of the block that you want to be detecting. So here I have it set, so it's detecting one block below uh, all the entities. And then the block that you want to be detecting, so here I have it set to magenta glaze terracotta. The reason I chose this one is because this one has an arrow. Uh, but this could be any block in the game. Uh, you could choose whatever block you want. And then the data value, uh, here I have it set to 2. And then I'll, I'll show you right now what, it, what the data value is in case you don't know. So if it detects a magenta glaze terracotta with the data value of 2, it's going to run a TP command. So it's going to be TP at S. So it's only going to be teleporting the player that has a magenta glaze terracotta below them with the data value of 2. Then it's the position of where you want to be teleporting them to. So tilt, 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 and then 0 0.4. So right now it's teleporting them 0 0.4 blocks in, the di in this direction. And let me show you what I mean by the data values. So the reason that data values are important is, for example, if I place up, so if I place this magenta glaze terracotta in this direction, the arrow's pointing this way. And if I place one this way, 
uh, these are both the same block, but they have a different data value. So if it's pointing in this direction, it has a different data value than if it's pointing in this direction or this direction or this direction. So you can use the data values to, to teleport the player or the entity on to different directions depending on, on which way they're pointing. And let me show you the rest of the command. So I'll just go over these really quick because they're pretty much the same. They just have a few different things. Uh, so this one is set to chain, unconditional, and always active. And this is the exact same command. So it's also detecting a magenta glazed terracotta, but this one is set data value of three. And this one is teleporting them negative 0 0.4 in this direction. And the third one is also set to chain, unconditional, and always active. Same thing again, it's detecting magenta glazed terracotta with a data value of four. Uh, but this one is teleporting them a positive 0 0.4 in this direction. And the last one is the same thing, chain unconditional and always active. So it's so it's doing the exact same thing again. It's, it's detecting a magenta glazed terracotta, but this one has a data value of five and this one is teleporting them negative 0 0.4 in this direction. And that's pretty much just how you create that. That's pretty simple. And let me show you a few more examples. So here I have it. So depending on the color of wool that you step on, it gives you a different potion effect. So let me show you what it means. So if I step on the white wool, this one gives me speed. If I step on the black wall, this one gives me blindness. If I step on the green one, this one will give me nausea. And this blue one here will give me jump boost. And I'm in creative right now, but if you step on this red one, this one will be an instant kill. And you can use this one for a lot of different things. You could use it to make like a parkour or something. And let me show you the commands for these are pretty much the exact same as the other ones, just a bit different. So let me show you. So this one, the first one is set to repeat, unconditional, and then always active. And it's the command. So it's execute, add E, tilt, 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 detect, tilt, tilt, negative one, tilt. And then wool, zero, effect, add S, speed, three, nine, and then true. So what this is doing, it's executing at all the entities. And then it's detecting and then where you want to detect the block. So here I have it set again. So it detects one block below all the entities. And the block that it's searching for is wall, and then the data value of the wall. So if you didn't know this, all the wall blocks are called the exact same. The only way that you could tell them apart is by the data value. So wall zero would be white wall, wall one would be orange, and it will keep switching like that all the way up to 15. And so here I have it set so it's detecting white wall. This is why it says wall then zero. If it detects a white wall below below the player, it's gonna run an effect command so it's effect add s you put add s so it only runs it from the player that has the white wall below them and then the effect that you want to give them so here i have it set so it gives them speed for and then the second so here it's three seconds and then the amplifier which is just nine and then true at the end this is so it hides the particle and the rest of these commands are the exact same they just have a different data value and a different effect so let me just show them to you but like I said, all these commands will be in the description. So the next one is chain, unconditional, and then always active. And here is looking, so this is the exact same command, it's just looking for a wall with a data value of 15. And the effect that it's gonna give them is blindness for two seconds and with an amplifier of three. Uh, the third one is chain, unconditional, always active. Same thing again, wall, and then this one has a data value of five. This one will give them nausea for five seconds with an amplifier of 255. And this other one is chain unconditional always active. Same thing again, wall, and then data value of three. And this one will give them jump boost for two seconds with an amplifier of 10. And this last one, same thing again, chain unconditional always active. And this one is also looking for a wall block. And this one is with the data value of 14. This will be a red wall. And if it does detect a red wall below the player, it's going to do a kill command. So it will be an instant kill if they step on that red wall. So this is how you create this and then you can just create more of these or change the effects or the command that you want them to run if they have these, this block below them. And now let me show you one last example. So here, uh, instead of this repeating command block, I have it set so it's running a particle command. So it's particle, then the name of the particle, and then the position. So, so since it's being executed from this command block, this way the particle is here. And you can change this around so you can make a particle trail. So all you would have to do is here, just uh, add an execute command. So you could do execute and then add A. So it's all at all players and then three tilt. So this will change it. So it's executing the particle command but from every player. So, so now it's running the particle command from wherever I'm at. And you can use this to make particle trails just like they have on servers. 
And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, just let me know. And I'll be uploading more examples of what you can create using this command. And yeah, that's pretty much it.